Well, I was going to ask for everyone's attention, but uh, it seems like you're a very well-behaved crowd. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Michael Sullivan. I'm the economic counselor here at POST. And I want to thank you all and welcome you for coming to celebrate the legacy of Ambassador Edward Perkins. And without further ado, Ambassador Caroline Kennedy. First of all, I want to thank everybody who's worked uh, hard to make this event possible. I think we've all learned a lot um, during this process, and um, it's a wonderful chance to celebrate a, um, an incredible diplomat. Uh, so I want to begin by acknowledging the wall and the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet and pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging. I had the, um, I also want to thank Ambassador Justin Mohammed for his leadership here and around the world. Um, and I want to welcome any First Nations people who are here today. Is Bradley Bell here? I don't know if so or not, but welcome um, to all and to all of you as well. Thank you for coming to celebrate the life and legacy of the late Ambassador Edward J. Perkins, a visionary diplomat whose accomplishments shaped the U.S. State Department and strengthened our partnership with Australia. And I also want to welcome uh, his daughters, Catherine and Sarah, who are hopefully joining us virtually uh, and who I had the pleasure of speaking to about their father um, recently uh, and about their time here in Australia and how much uh, this that meant to him and to their family. Um, so it's great to have them. They told me that Ambassador Perkins really dedicated his life to service. He served in the U.S. Army and Marine Corps. Uh, then he worked for USAID and joined the State Department in 1972. His diplomatic career was marked by exceptional pioneering achievement, including as United States Ambassador to South Africa, to the UN, and his final post as Ambassador to Australia. Edward Perkins once said, American diplomats should be a reflection of the various communities that we come from. And he devoted his life and career to making that belief a reality. He was a founding member of the Thursday Luncheon Group, which is an employee advocacy group dedicated to advancing the careers of African-American diplomats. The Thursday Luncheon Group was the State Department's first employee advocacy group, and it paved the way for many others, and it's still active today. As Director General of the Foreign Service, Ambassador Perkins expanded efforts to recruit officers from diverse communities. His work led to the creation of the Pickering, Randall, Wrangell, and Payne Fellowship programs, which continue to attract underrepresented groups to a career in diplomacy. We're honored that members of the Thursday Luncheon Group and the Fellowship Program could also join us virtually today. They embody Ambassador Perkins' legacy of building a U.S. Foreign Service that reflects the diversity of our country and represents all Americans. Ambassador Perkins also believed that American diplomats engage diverse communities in the countries in which they serve. He put this practice into practice during his time in Australia. In his first staff meeting at the embassy, Ambassador Perkins said he wanted to hire indigenous Australians, get to know them as a people and communities, and visit indigenous communities across Australia. He later wrote about his interest in indigenous art and music and his visits to various communities across Australia, including in Alice Springs, Arnhem Land, and Palm Island in Queensland. Throughout his time here, Ambassador Perkins created opportunities for cultural exchange by making sure that visiting, that visiting US musicians, artists, and writers were able to meet with their indigenous counterparts. Ambassador Perkins was also a visionary when it came to our work with Australia on environmental issues. Almost exactly 30 years ago, on March 8, 1994, just across the street of Parliament House, Ambassador Perkins signed a historic agreement between the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and its then Australian equivalent. Long before phrases such as global warming and climate change were commonly used and understood, this agreement recognized that environmental degradation was a planetary trend that required a coordinated international response. Last year, President Biden and Prime Minister Albanese announced climate cooperation as the third pillar of the US-Australia alliance. Ambassador Perkins and the Australians who worked on our environmental agreement 30 years ago 
were clearly way ahead of their time. One of those Australians, in fact, the Australian who signed the agreement, along with Ambassador Perkins, is Barry Carbon, and we're delighted that he also is joining us virtually today. The US and Australia have built on the environmental agreement that Edward Perkins and Barry Carbon signed 30 years ago. The US EPA recently committed to share best practices with the Australian federal government as it launches its new organization, Environment Protection Australia. We look forward to working with our Australian colleagues, including those here today, to combat climate change and protect the environment for the next 30 years and beyond. Ambassador Edward Perkins left a legacy of diverse US diplomatic service and environmental cooperation between the United States and Australia that has only expanded and strengthened since his time as ambassador here. I'm honored to plant this dogwood tree today to commemorate his life and legacy. Thank you all for coming. And We have some refreshments for everybody on the front patio, and um, and the flack will be arriving soon. So <laughs> you can all come back. 